What's the grossest thing you did in your service? <laughs> to be honest, shit in a bucket in my house. Yep, yeah, did it, done it. Check. It's, <laughs> so I don't know, we obviously can't speak for all countries, yeah. but in South Africa it's advised that you don't go out to your pit latrine at night. Stay in your house after dark. Yeah, and so there's times when my community is very safe. I had a dog. Um, I live in a very respected house. So I, there's many times like when it was still dark out, I'd go out to the pit latrine and use it. But sometimes, you know, mother nature hits when it's like <laughs> three in the morning and it's not really yeah. an option. And I had a little bucket that you usually use to urinate in mm. because that's, you know, normal. <laughs> well, sometimes other stuff had to happen in it. Yeah. Especially because, let's be real, the big D, as we called it in our cohort, yeah. diarrhea, is that's a volunteer's I, best friend. You have to drink bottled water in the villages yeah. or filtered water because even just, if, yeah. Although some volunteers did try to acclimate to the yeah. local water, like slowly introducing it into their diet. Um, I never did that. I did brush my teeth with it though. I did every once in a while just because it was a pain in the butt to not. Yeah. You just get sick of it. Um, okay, so everyone has seen, everyone who watches my YouTube channel, everyone, um, has seen Ginger, my dog. So Shelby also had a dog. I already know the answer to this, but like, good decision, bad decision. <laughs> Both. Oh, okay. I wasn't expecting Great decision that. because I would never not want a dog. Mm. Bad decision, it makes things a lot harder. Um, yeah. I mean, you have to think traveling. Like, if you personally, my go go, the woman I stay with, doesn't like dogs. She was kind enough to let me get one, but like, she wasn't going to take care of my dog for me. Whereas, mm. and I was only staying with her, whereas some people stay with like families with kids. Yeah. Um, so you have to think about the things you can't do. Um, that make your service more difficult. <laughs> um, Shelby lives in a rockin' village. Oh yeah, I live right on the main road and then right behind me is a Shabine, aka a bar, so yeah. it gets pretty cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I don't regret getting him at all, but there were things that, you know, even when I had to leave for medical stuff, yeah. like it, when you find out you're leaving for medical stuff, it's pretty much like, okay, we booked a flight in three days. Yeah. And I was like, um, what am I going to do with my dog? <laughs> um, so, you know, it's one of those things. It's it's a big commitment in the States to own a pet. It's like a hundred times more of a commitment yeah, here. Yeah, definitely. Because you have to take care of it, get it to the vet, which is not easy. No. Um, especially if you're not staying with a family that has access to transportation. Like, I know some families had cars, and yeah. so that was kind of nice because you could ask and pay a family member to drive you mm -hmm. um, to get to the nearest town. But, like, I had to take my dog on, like, a three-hour taxi ride. And no one likes a dog in a taxi. No, especially my dog that would bark at cows while driving. Um, that was always fun. I took her dog on a taxi once, and we were just sitting there, and a woman opens the door, and she's like, Ish, no, no, dog, no, and she refused to get on the taxi, and she just so. Stopped. Um, yeah, it's, a lot of people have said cats are easy, which I believe, um, but if yeah. you want a dog, just really think about what you're going to do with it. After. Yeah, one after, like, are you going to just leave it in the village? Because, like, is that really the right thing to do if, mm -hmm. like, Morgan left Ginger in the village, but, like, had a family that was, to like, that. totally going to take care of it. Like, mm -hmm. so you have to realize, like, do I have somebody that's going to take care of it, like, actually take care of it? Um, am I going to be able to afford to bring it back? Because it's not cheap. Um, I mean, I'm sure it's even harder in, like, the North or, like, Central African countries as well to yeah. bring a dog. Or even, it, like, I don't know, Asian countries. Yeah, I don't know. Can't speak to that so much, but I'm sure because it... Mm -hmm. I mean, put it this way, travel agencies, like, there's a thing that are called pet, pet tra 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 travel agencies. It's crazy. It's real. Um, and it's expensive. It's expensive, but let me tell you, it is so nice to have somebody mm. take care of all of that stuff for you. Um, but yeah, you have to be ready for that expense. And then you just have to also realize that even if you take care of your dog, they're not getting the best care here. So when you take them back to the States, if you choose to do that, like, I got really lucky that my dog was um, pretty healthy. I only had to deworm him. Mm -hmm. and get some shots that weren't available here in South Africa yeah. um, and then get them neutered because that wasn't an option for me here um, mm -hmm. just time-wise but you know yeah. there's definitely definitely going to be expenses back on the state side as well in terms yeah. of making your dog yeah safe. but the positives are also great it's having company dog. yeah I mean <laughs> 
And like you said, you get really lonely, so having that company is really nice. Like Morgan was just looking through my phone at all my, <laughs> all of my pictures of uh, Charlie and my dog. Um, because let's be real, that's mm -hmm. what all of my pictures and yeah. videos from Peace Corps were. Yeah. Like, sure, I have some pictures of my kids from my org and like some of the people I work with, but like, who cares? Most of them work my dog. Yeah. Um, and it's also a really good cultural exchange. It is, especially in a country like South Africa. Yeah, like I mean. teaching the kids and even the adults to like love dogs and treat them well because like here they're not pets so yeah. showing them like how to treat them and like like they know. thought it was crazy that not only did Chomi sleep inside my house with me yeah. like that was unheard of and then when they found out that I let him sleep like on my bed or on mm -hmm. the couch I had in my room if, they, if he wanted which he didn't want to very often but yeah um, he was allowed to they thought that was like nuts. Yeah. They were like, dude, you're you're crazy. And even just showing affection to dogs is yeah. like, like mind walking blowing. around on the leash. Yeah, leashes are crazy. But by the end of like I know by the end of my service, like kids like loved hugging Ginger and like walking oh, yeah. her. All the kids at MPO yeah. loved Chomi. Even today they asked me about Chomi. Yeah. And then I'm sure it's cool also, like I don't know because I never did this, but bringing Chomi back to the States and being able to be like, this dog is from South Africa, yeah. like that starts a conversation as yeah. well. Well, in his name, I chose to name him something in Sepeti, uh, which was obviously the mm. language that we learned for our village. Mm. Um, not that either of us used it, <laughs> but um, I really thought that it was something, it was important to me that he had something that was connected to mm. South Africa. And so yeah. he got Chomi, which means friend. Yeah. Um, and so that always is a good um, conversation starter too because Chomi is obviously not like a normal yeah, dog name like in the that. States. People look at it because it's spelled T-S-H-O-M-I <laughs> and so they look at the spelling of it and they're like, well, what it's is that? It's just Chomi? <laughs> and so I, it's just a good conversation starter and kind of explain yeah. that he's not an American dog. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do you feel about Peace Corps as an organization? Like, do you think it's run well. Do you think it's a good organization? Uh, neither of us are in Peace Corps anymore, so we can be totally honest and like say all the good and bad about it. What do you think? I have a love-hate relationship with Peace Corps. I think that's most fun to um, I mean, I think that it's an awesome way for individuals of all ages, races, backgrounds, backgrounds you know, sexual you don't need any money yeah, to Yeah, well, and sexual orientations. Yeah. Like, there's so many ways to go and spread not only like whatever your job is mm -hmm. and like you know engage in that but just engage in a cultural exchange like even today we got asked if we were friends with Beyonce <laughs> um and you know it's just those little uh, things that like that yeah, kind of stuff is time. great for Peace Corps volunteers um and I the two-year commitment is nice yeah I don't well. think there's a lot of other things that allow you to do the kind of stuff that being a Peace Corps volunteer is because you can travel the world while doing it you know yeah whatever um, the bureaucracy, bureauc oh my gosh, bureaucracy <laughs> of Peace Corps and kind of like the big brother almost of having somebody yeah. have to know where you are all the time, what you're doing. I mean, that's what we signed up for. That's what you'll sign up for when you do Peace Corps. Mm -hmm. So you need to realize that. You need to know that you're not your own person for yeah. two years, basically. You're, you're being babysat. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the decisions you make aren't your own. Yeah. You're responsible for representing... Peace Corps as an organization, you're responsible for representing the United States of America. Yeah. Um, you have to be on 24-7. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot that comes with it, but the work that you do and the experiences you get mm -hmm. are pretty awesome from it. Yeah, definitely. And I think, I mean, even just in the States, like working for a government organization is frustrating. Mm -hmm. So. People forget that like this is a U.S. government organization. Yeah. Just if you happen not, to be in another country. And we're not getting paid. <laughs> yeah, pretty nice, nice little stipend. Um, <laughs> but no, that's also the good thing about Peace Corps is that a lot of volunteer organizations, they expect you to pay for mm -hmm. everything. Like they want you to pay for your flight to go abroad, and then you have to like pay for your housing and stuff. And this is truly the only volunteer organization where you don't have to pay for anything. Yeah, other but than, you do like, have personal to, stuff, yeah, obviously, but... Like, personal travel. But you do have to make that to your commitment, which other organizations don't require. Although I'm sure there's some, like, yeah. church or religious travel that isn't um, costly. But, yeah, and then because it's a government organization, they have to, like, watch their back 24-7. And so mm -hmm. if the littlest thing goes wrong, like, they're on it, which is yeah. sometimes, like, not good for volunteers. Exactly. Like, there's a lot of things that get volunteers in trouble or sent home mm -hmm. that you wouldn't think are that big of a deal, but because 
We're government employees, basically. Yeah, so yeah. it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I, you know, we can only speak for Peace Corps South Africa, obviously, but it's, I've heard common sentiments among other volunteers in other countries as well. Mm-hmm.